In this video, I'm gonna show you how to fix underexposed photos in Photoshop. All right, so the image that we're gonna work with is this underexposed image of my daughter that I took with my Canon T6. The first thing we're gonna to do to try and fix this thing up is to go down here to the little half circle adjustment layer, click on that and add a curves adjustment. That's gonna show up right here. And then you're just gonna go up to this line, click on it right near the middle and bring it up, just slide it up until it starts to flat line like this. Then you're just gonna bring it back like that. You want it to be curved the whole way like this. Then make sure you're selected on the mask part, like the white like rectangle here, and then go up to image and down to apply image. Everything in here, you're gonna leave the same, except you just wanna make sure like, so this is with invert unchecked. You wanna make sure that invert is checked because that kind of levels, evens things out a little bit in terms of the contrast. When you have it like this, then you still have these kind of like bright spots and dark spots. So make sure invert is checked and click okay. Next, we're gonna go and add another adjustment layer. This time we're gonna add hue saturation. And you know, this one's not really that big of a deal in my image because my, my kind of colors and stuff are pretty oversaturated already. But when you do this, you might lose some saturation in the shadows and you can barely see it on the mask here, but that's all the stuff that we were dealing with on this mask right here. So if we click on this and we go up to saturation, we're gonna increase the saturation for everything, which we don't want. So I'm gonna put that back. So what we have to do is we have to click on this mask right here, hold Alt or Option and click on it and then drag it up to this mask. You're gonna say replace layer mask and click yes. And you're gonna see that all that same detail is gonna be added onto this mask. So now whatever we mess with here is just dealing with the kind of dark areas over here. So I'm gonna click back on this little symbol here on the adjustment layer, and I'm just gonna boost my saturation in the shadows just a little bit, just a tiny little bit in my image. You might have to boost yours more depending on what your image was. And then I'm just gonna shift this towards the blue just a touch as well, like maybe just a little tiny bit because it was pretty, you know, kind of red. So I'm just gonna shift it this way just a touch. Okay, so the last adjustment layer that we're gonna add, if we go back down here, is gonna be a levels. You don't really need to do this one, but I'm gonna do it anyway. I'm gonna slide this one here over to right where this, the white like mountain things start. So you can see there's this gap where there's nothing. I'm just gonna slide it to the end of there. And then I'm just gonna fine tune this one a little bit for the midtones. You know, it's pretty good. I'm just gonna leave it right there. And that's it right there. Okay. So now we're ready to kind of really fine tune our colors and finalize our image. So what we're gonna do is just click on this, the top one, then hold shift, click on your background image, then go control J to duplicate everything, and then control E to merge them. Then we're gonna right click on that because what that did was that took everything we had and made it into kind of one image now. So we're gonna right click on that and convert it to a smart object. Then we're gonna go up to filter and go into camera raw filter. And in here, there's just a whole bunch of adjustments that we can make to really fine tune our image. So I'm gonna slide way to the top. The first thing I'm gonna do is in white balance and I'm just gonna try this little drop down and go to auto. And that did, you know, okay, but it's obviously a little bit too kind of magenta-y blue. So I'm gonna to go to the picker over here. And if you have something that's kind of a neutral kind of gray, like I have a little bit over here. I'm gonna try and click on that and see if I can get a better look. So I think that's a better starting point. And then you can still just slide these along. So just kind of get close to what you think you like. So I'm just gonna leave it like that for now. You can fine tune those as much as you want. Okay, next we're gonna deal with our kind of final exposure and contrast stuff here. So you can decide if you wanna bump it up even more to make it even brighter. So I'm just gonna bump it just a touch. Then I like to go to my highlights next. So you wanna decide like, do you wanna take away those highlights even more, even though we already did, or do you wanna maybe put some of them back in? So I'm gonna leave mine, you know, pretty close to the middle. I'm just gonna bump it up a little bit. Then obviously deal with your shadows. So I'm gonna maybe bring mine down a little bit to add some contrast. That means I don't really have to do this contrast. So you could go up here and mess around with this if you want as well. At this point, I'm gonna kind of leave it in the middle and then do the same thing for your whites and blacks. So play around with these until you get kind of what you like. There's no 
kind of rule what's right or wrong in there, then for me, I'm just gonna actually drop my texture just a bit. Like you can create kind of some cool looks, like you can see your hair goes all crazy there if you crank up the texture. I'm gonna peel it back a little bit to kind of soften it. Um, because it was so dark and you've cranked it up, you've probably added a lot of noise. So this kind of helps with that sometimes. I'm gonna put a little clarity back into it and maybe even a little bit of dehaze into it. No, I'm just gonna leave, leave that alone. Okay, I'm gonna pump up my vibrance because I'm gonna deal with some of this, uh, the color still a little bit lower down here. So I'm gonna bump up my vibrance just a touch. I'm gonna skip this section uh, in noise reduction. I'm just gonna, again, just put a little bit of that to eliminate some of the noise that might've been added as we bumped up the exposure. I'm gonna come down here. I am not great with these HSL adjustments, but I do know that you know, there's some red in there that I kind of want to take away. So I'm just going to slide this. Just know that I'm taking it away in the face, but you're also going to lose it in other places. But I'm okay with that because I think that looks a little bit better within the skin tones there. Uh, the one that I'm going to go to here is my highlights, my split toning. And I'm going to go to blue. I'm going to slide this, the hue over to blue. And I'm going to add some blue into the highlights. So if you see, I, I can crank it to create a different look, but I'm just going to put a little bit into the highlights to kind of neutralize that a little bit. And then I can do the same thing in the shadows for me. I'm just going to go to blue. And so you pick whatever color, like I'm picking blue because it's kind of the opposite of the kind of magenta -y red that I'm dealing with. So in my shadows, I'm going to also do that, add a little blue. If you, you know, you can, again, you can just, you know, you can create whatever look you want. I'm just trying to neutralize it a little bit. So I'm gonna bring that up like that. Then just down here, kind of the last things, I'm gonna to go to, um, you know, my calibration. And so like it with underneath calibration, so in shadows, red primary. And these ones, you can just create, again, just kind of create your looks. If I go this way, you know, that creates kind of a cool look. If I go this way, then it really punches the blue. So for my case, I think I'm gonna just go that way to punch up the blues a little bit. And then with these ones, you can really see that if I, Go to the left, you can see that's where a lot of that pink is showing up in, in her face. So I might just go to the right a little bit more to you know eliminate some of that. Same thing here, if you slide, you can see that to the right is a little more pinky. So I might just go to the left in that case as well, just a touch. And then with the blues, kind of same thing. But I think I'm just gonna leave that one in the middle because I already kind of dealt with it up here. So really go back and keep just fine tuning until you get the look that you want then click OK, and you'll see that your original image that we just had will just switch over to the new one. So I know we already just saw it, but I'm gonna scroll down here and I'm gonna hold Alt or Option to click on this eyeball. So you can see that's what we started with at the very, very start, and then boom, that's what we have at the very, very end. Oh, and just so you know, the reason why we made it a smart object before is because if you now don't like something or you wanna make further adjustments, all you have to do is go over here to where it says camera raw filter under your smart filters, double click, and it'll bring you right back into camera raw filter and you can adjust whatever you want. So let's say you need to bump up your highlights, you wanna change your color, you know, do whatever. Then once you're good, just click okay and it'll make those adjustments to your image once again. So there you go, there's a heavily underexposed image fixed in Photoshop. If you got something out of this video, make sure to drop a like. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing and I'll catch you next time.